Welcome to Save Your Sanity, help for handling hijackles, those difficult, toxic, and often disturbing people in your life. I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler, the Relationship Help Doctor, and I'm here for you. You'll get the insight, skills, strategies, and support to stop tolerating verbal and emotional abuse, whether it's happening now or it happened to you in the past, maybe by a parent, partner, ex, relative, or even a co-worker. Time to take life back, to recover and to rediscover you, your values, dreams, desires, and realize them in healthy ways in healthy relationships. I'm so glad you're here. Hello, today I want to talk with you about passive aggressive people. And they're different than hijackals. One thing for sure, all hijackals are passive aggressive but not all passive aggressive people are hijackals. So today I wanted to share with you some things. I also talk about them on my re website at forrelationshiphelp.com, F-O-R relationship, H-E-L-P.com. And these are the things that passive aggressive people always do, but they don't realize that they're doing it often. And the results of doing it would mean that you might be left angry and alone and shaking your head. So I wanted to give you a few ideas. And if this stimulates your thinking, and I hope it will, please go to PassiveAggressiveChecklist.com. Take that with somebody in mind that you think may be passive aggressive, even if that's you, and answer the questions honestly. And you will soon find out if you or the person you have in mind is passive aggressive. So it's passiveaggressivechecklist.com. So how do you know if you're passive aggressive? Well, maybe people think you're difficult to be around. Maybe they don't trust you. Maybe they don't respect you in the way you wish they would. And it kind of leaves you shaking your head. Well, the truth is that you may be exhibiting passive aggressive behaviors that just totally confuse people. And when people are confused, they get turned off and they want to walk away from you. So I wanted to help you today make these seemingly behavior traits really clear because they can be confusing and the people who are experiencing you as a passive aggressive person or you experiencing someone else as a passive aggressive person leaves you shaking your head, wondering if you're safe, not wanting to get close, feeling the person's a little too prickly for you. And if you're in relationship with that person, it's your mother or your partner, somebody at work who is always that way, you're going to see the negative results of that. So I'm going to give you a straightforward list today, 12 things, 12 things that indicate that passive aggressive behavior is part of the program for that person or for you. So I'm going to talk about it as though we're talking about you so that you get the message and I don't have to change the pronouns. So let's think about this. So generally you're behaving in a passive aggressive manner when you don't speak your truth openly, kindly, and honestly, when asked for your opinion or when asked to do something for someone. So this shows up as you being assertively unassertive. You say yes, which sounds assertive, when you really mean no way, which is unassertive. Then you let your behavior say no way for you. So people become confused and mistrusting of you. And I was watching a TV program the other day and, and the fellow honestly said, I don't like to deal with negative behavior in the moment. Well, that's a sign of passive aggression. So when someone asks you to do something or asks you for your opinion, give them it kindly and honestly at the same time, but make sure that it is real. Because if you don't open your mouth and kindly and honestly give your opinion or say whether you actually will or will don't do what they're asking you to do, you are being passive aggressive. So that's number one. Number two is that you appear sweet and compliant and agreeable, but underneath you're really resentful and angry and petty and envious. 
And you're living with pairs of opposites within you. And that makes people around you just crazy because they don't know what to believe. They don't know what's really going on here. They don't know what you really mean. And they feel unsafe around you. So if you put on a good face and make yourself look so sweet and lovely and agreeable, and yet there's an underlying thing like, how dare you ask me, you may be coming across as passive aggressive and you may very well be passive aggressive and you're not going to be happy with that and neither are the people around you. So number three, passive aggressive people are afraid of being alone and equally afraid of being dependent. So this is a case of, I hate you, but don't leave me. You're, you fear direct communication because you fear rejection. And that's really real. You don't want to tell the truth in case the other person doesn't like it and they leave you. So then you often push people away that you care about because you don't want to seem needy or in need of support. And all the while, you're afraid of being alone. And you want to control those around you so they won't leave you. Can you see how very, very confusing that behavior is? Because it certainly is. So number four, passive aggressive people complain frequently that you're treated unfairly. Is that the first thought in your mind when something happens? I am being treated unfairly? Well, it could be that you're experiencing passive aggression. And that's, that's a big deal. So if you think you're being treated unfairly and you think the world is always treating you unfairly, rather than taking responsibility for stepping up and speaking your truth, you then set yourself up as the supposedly innocent victim. And you say other people are hard on you or unfair, or unreasonable or excessively demanding. Oh, poor you. And yet... You're complaining frequently that you're treated unfairly and yet you're not doing a thing about it. And that's a sign that you're being passive aggressive. Number five, passive aggressive people frequently procrastinate, especially on things that you do for other people. You've learned that one way of controlling other people is to make them wait. And you have lots of excuses why you haven't been able to get things done, right? You even blame others for why that's so. It's their fault. It's amazingly unreasonable, but you do it even though it destroys relationships, damages your career, and loses you friendships and jobs. And then you tell others how justified you are in being angry because once again, other people treated you unfairly. Does that ring true? Procrastination. Procrastination about telling the truth, about telling what you really feel, about when you'll get something done, that you'll get something done, push it off. And then when someone confronts you with, is it done? You make it their fault for being so unreasonable as to ask you. That's passive aggression. This ringing some bells? (laughs) All right, number six. Passive aggressive people are unwilling to give you a straight answer. Unwilling to give you a straight answer. Why? Because they're afraid to do that. Because you might reject them. You might not like their answer. So they try to give you an answer that will appease you and make you go away. So another way of controlling others is to send a mixed message, one that leaves the other person completely unclear about your thoughts or plans or intentions. And then you make them feel wrong when you tell them that what they took from your communication was not what you meant. Oh, silly them. No, that was a setup that you did. You didn't want to tell the truth. You didn't want to be rejected in the moment. So you gave them a confusing answer that gave them the feeling that you really were going to do what they asked you to do and that you wanted to. And yet when they ask you, you say, oh, no, 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 no. You were all wrong about that. Crazy making, right? Absolutely crazy making. And this is not even hijackal behavior completely. This is just passive aggressive people. And remember what I said earlier. 
Passive-aggressive people are not all hijackals, but all hijackals are passive-aggressive. And if you want to learn more about that, watch my videos on passive-aggressive behavior at YouTube, youtube.com slash for relationship help. Okay, so we've got six of them done. Here's number seven. Passive-aggressive people sulk, withdraw, and pout. Got somebody in mind? Passive aggressive people complain that others are unreasonable and that the other people lack empathy when they expect you to live up to the promises and the obligations and the duties that you accepted. You said you'd do them. Passive aggressive women tend to favor the silent treatment as an expression of their contempt. Oh, how we hate the silent treatment. And passive aggressive men prefer the deep sigh and the shake of the head and they just walk away. <sighs> poor me. And both expressions say, you poor confused person, you're just not worth talking to. When the real reason for your behavior is that they cannot, have not, will not take responsibility for their own behavior. So a passive aggressive person does not want to take responsibility for their behavior. And that might be you. You don't want to take responsibility for your behavior. So you want to pass it off on to somebody else. And you are kind of contemptuous when somebody says, did you do it? And I, well, that's too many expectations. Who do you think I am? That's passive aggressive. Okay, number eight. Passive-aggressive people, maybe you, cover up your feelings of inadequacy with superiority, disdain, or even hostile passivity. So when you set yourself up to be a self-sabotaging failure, sort of, why do you have such unrealistic expectations of me? Or you set yourself up as a tyrant or a goddess incapable of anything less than perfection, sort of, to whom do you think you're speaking, peon? You're shaking in your boots from fear of competition and being found out as less than perfect. You know that. And by the way, you likely picked that one up in childhood. Of course, all of these things you picked up in childhood, and then you practiced, and you got better at them. And that's not a good skill to have, is it? <laughs> so number nine, why passive-aggressive? People who are passive aggressive are often late and often forgetful in quotes. Because one way of driving people away is to be thoughtless, inconsiderate, and by the way, infuriating. And then to put the cherry on top, you suggest it's unrealistic to expect you to arrive on time. Or in your words, it's unrealistic to expect me to think of everything. So being chronically late is disrespectful of other people. Supposedly forgetting to do what you've agreed to do is simply demonstrating your lack of trustworthiness. Did you think about it that way? It's not the other person's fault. It's you who's doing it. It's you who's late. It's you who's forgetful. It's not their fault. It's yours. So who wants to be around that for very long? People get worn out. They get tired. They don't want any more of that. They don't want any more of you. And if you have another person beside yourself in mind this today, know that people are going to leave you and they're going to be resentful about it. And they're going to avoid you like the plague. So number 10, you drag your feet to frustrate other people. And when you drag your feet, it certainly does frustrate other people. So again, this is a control move. It's sort of like procrastinating. But the difference is you begin and you appear as though you are doing what you said you would do. But then you always have an excuse why you can't continue or you can't get it done or it just isn't the right time. And you won't even say when it will be or when it even might be done. That's absolutely infuriating. And imagine what that does to your workplace. Imagine what that does to your job history. Ooh, don't get me started. So number 11, 
If you're passive aggressive, you make up stories and excuses and lies really quickly, right off the top of your head. You're absolutely the master of avoidance of the straight answer. You'll go to any lengths to tell a story or to withhold information or even to withhold love and affirmation in your primary relationships. It's like you think if you let folks think you like them too much, that would be giving them power. And so there's a part of you that would rather be in control by creating a story that seems plausible and gets them off your back and makes reality look better from your viewpoint, regardless of how it looks to them. So you make up stories and excuses and lies. You push it off. You don't want to face the music then, so you try and push it off. That's what passive aggressive people do. And number 12, you constantly protect yourself so no one will know how afraid you are of being inadequate, imperfect, left behind, dependent, or maybe you're afraid of being simply human and you think you should be superhuman. So seriously, take a while to ponder your own behavior. If any of these traits describe you as you usually are, or you usually are in one particular relationship, take note, because this can really help you finally understand why you're having difficulties in your personal and work relationships. It's hard to be with a person who's passive aggressive, and it's really hard to be that person because you're always being rejected or fearful that you're going to be. And the good news is that people are not passive aggressive by nature. They're not born that way. It's learned. And these behavior patterns can change. You just need some insights and skills and some relationship help. And I can help you with that. So let's talk for sure. You want to talk? Go to fourrelationshiphelp.com and just click on work with Dr. Shaler. So if you've realized a few uncomfortable things about yourself in the list, what do you do now? Well, like I said, you get some relationship help. We've all come by our passive aggressive stuff, quite honestly. It's not about blame. Don't blame yourself. Don't blame another person. There's no blame here. But if you heard this list and it recognized, you recognized yourself, you have two choices. Recognize what's not working for you and change it. Or I guess you could continue to blow it off as other people's problems. And as Dr. Phil would say, how's that working for you? It probably isn't. And you don't like it. You don't like yourself when you do it. And it is within your control to change it. So choose the first. Get some help. Recognize what's not working for you and change it. Because that will allow you to feel more accepted, more loved, more wanted, more appreciated and respected immediately, right away. So step up. You can't do it any younger. So why not jump in and do it now? This can really help you, whether we were talking about yourself or you're talking about somebody else. Remember, check it out. Go to passiveaggressivechecklist.com. Learn more. Really jump in. Figure it all out. You'll be so much happier and you'll be more assertive in your relationships if you're the passive aggressive one. And you'll become more assertive in your relationships with other people who are behaving in passive aggressive ways. I hope this helps. Talk soon. I'm so glad you spent this time with me today. I hope you heard something that touched your heart and empowered you to move forward. You can have the life and relationships that you most want, and that begins with you within you today. I'm always here for you. Life can get better, and you heard that from me, the Relationship Help Doctor. I'm Roberta Shaler, and I work with clients throughout the world through video conferencing. We can talk. So learn more at 4RelationshipHelp.com. F-O-R Relationship H-E-L-P dot com or visit me on YouTube at 4 Relationship Help. Join me for next week's show.